So it's that time of year again. The trees are budding out, the grass is turning green in the lawn, and something else that's going on in our lakes and primarily in our rivers and tributaries um, is the sucker run. And if you don't know, a sucker is a rough fish. It's a bottom feeding type fish. I really get a kick out of them because up here in northern Minnesota, you know, you're locked in ice for quite a portion of the year. So really the first accessible fish that you can fish for are suckers uh, with a long rod. So, you know, you put your ice fishing rods away for the year and it's nice to get a bend in a long rod again. So I'm gonna rig up a couple different rods here. I got one 610 medium light, this is a fate black. And then I got a 10 foot Lewis Wally Marshall. The long rod's really nice for when you've got high water conditions. This area that we're going to is prone to flood and when you get a high bank like that, it's hard to get your rod tip out over the brush or the bank, you know, since it's a little bit farther away. So the long rod aids in that, helps us get our bait back out into the river a little bit and um, we're not, our line isn't just bumping up against the grass that way. So that's in case of high water. And it's actually just an extremely fun rod. It's designed for crappies, but I mean, it's just a fun rod. It's a pretty light action rod. The average size of these suckers is gonna be anywhere from a couple pounds to maybe a five, six pounder being the biggest. But So that's a really fun sized fish to catch on this light long rod. And then there is something to be said about a shorter rod too, because when you've got a longer rod with a little bit of play in it like that, um, you get a lot of false alarms because the sinkers, you know, tumbling around in the current like that, and your rod tip's gonna be doing a lot of this, where if you've got a shorter, stouter rod, your rod tip's just gonna hold true, you know? So there's pros and cons for both. We're gonna try them both. I'll be ready for both scenarios. It's about 10 o'clock at night right now. One thing that goes along with spring is, of course, the mud season. Um, and so what I'm gonna do for bait is I'm gonna go catch me some night crawlers. Um, the snow just recently melted. I've got a garden out front and so I've raked that garden back down to the bare dirt and you know since I said it's mud season that means the ground is really saturated. Most of the time when you're going to go out and do some night crawler picking is after a fresh rain. Those night crawlers love to come out, lay on the cold soil like that and breathe in oxygen and do whatever they do. Um, but right now the ground is saturated and so you don't need that rain every night. And with the temperatures being cool at night, it's also favorable for them. So I just went out a couple days ago, picked a ton of night crawlers. I'm going to go out again and get some fresh stuff for tomorrow. So I'll take you along on that, maybe snatch up a couple of them, show you how that's done. But um, right now I'm going to show you the rig that I use. So first things first, we're going to put a bullet weight on. This is a 3 8 ounce weight. Um, we can play around with weight. You know, it's kind of depends on how much current we've got going on. If it it's going to be a little stronger than you can always throw on a second weight, but 3 8 is a pretty standard weight for the amount of current that we have around here. Uh, next I'm going to put on a little swivel here. Uh, this is a size 8 Mustad swivel. Pretty awesome little swivel. I like the smaller size ones, but it can't be small enough where it slides through the sinker. You'll just have to find that out with trial and error. And I'm just going to tie that end coming off my reel just with a fisherman's knot. Just a quick and easy down and dirty knot. Lube it up, pull it snug. Okay, so we've got bullet weight, bullet weight, barrel swivel, and we're gonna do little fluorocarbon leader. So this is just 10 pound fluorocarbon. You can use your favorite kind or whatever. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it on the spool and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the barrel swivel and just tie a fisherman's knot on that side as well. So leader length I don't think is very important. I mean when you think about it, there's a couple of factors. If this thing's laying on bottom down here like this and you've only got this much, um, either way your night crawler is going to be laying on the bottom. I mean sometimes when you've got a longer leader the current will have influence on how much it sways but I don't think that's such a big deal. Um, but one thing that I think I've noticed is that it helps to have a little bit of stretch or at least a little bit of room between the sinker and where the hook is because a lot of times these are just real fast biters. If it's short like that, I think they have a tendency to kind of feel that there's some resistance there, whereas back here they've got a little bit of play. So you could say maybe I leave it on the longer side a little bit, but 
I don't think it matters all that much. I mean, there's probably such a thing as too long, but you know, that's plenty. This is a size two mustad hook. Uh, this is a light wire hook. Nice thing about that is they're wicked sharp. Um, like I said, you got a lot of really fast biters. I mean, early in the season like this, you can see smaller fish more often before the big females start to push in. Um, the smaller suckers with their smaller mouths tend to be really quick biters. So having a smaller hook that's a little bit sharper will hook them a lot faster. I don't know if you can see, we'll get a close of it in a little bit here, but the line tie is offset a little bit and I always tie a snell knot with that. So I'm gonna tie a snell knot real quick. It'll be nice and pretty on there. And that's essentially just the rig. So there's our hook with the snell knot. There's our barrel swivel and our sinker. And that's it. So we'll go out back right now, shine the light in the garden and see if we can get some night crawlers. I'm pretty sure they'll be thick enough, plenty thick enough. These crawlers are so thick right now that when you take a step, you can just hear them just like hundreds of them slithering into the mud. They're definitely thick, so we'll wrangle up a few. Took a nice spin around the garden. Got some bait for tomorrow. Okay, so we're just getting to our first spot of the day. Uh, this is a spot I've been to throughout the last week and it looks like the water's actually come down quite a bit, so. Uh, conditions look pretty favorable and they've been running here for about a week now so I'm hoping that we catch it right on the head so we'll show you how we get set up here I got my buddy Drew with me it's always nice to have an extra line down so here we are this is right where the river meets this lake here which makes it an awesome early spot like I said last night or like I said before these fish stage in the lake and they run up the river so this is a good interception point for when they run find you a nice sand stick. And a sand stick, if you've never seen one, if you never grew up fishing with one, is just, you know, a stick that you can stick into the mud with a Y on it like that so your rod sits in it. And we'll show you how that sits in there nice. But essentially you're just putting the crawler on bottom and just letting it sit there. So it's nice to have something holding it and your arm doesn't go dead at the end of the day. So I got my sand stick. I'm gonna put it right about here in the mud. Shove it down in there. You can see my Y is right here. That'll support my rod. All right, I got my sand stick in place. So now we're gonna grab our crawlers that we captured last night. I know this looks like a store-bought crawler cam, but you can't bring all 200 crawlers that you picked last night with you. Just get yourself a mashed potato a little deal here and put a couple crawlers enough for the day in it. So the nice thing too about picking your own crawlers is that you can get crawlers that are just the right size you know you're not breaking off crawlers all the time because you've got the perfect length already so got this little mustad hook here small light wire hook I'm gonna take the crawler and just start threading it on there back and forth threading it on there hook through twist it around hook through twist it around and I'm gonna leave a tiny bit of tail just like that so that's it, just a piece of crawler sitting on bottom. So the real seat's in the mud here. Got it sitting on the sand stick. Rod tip comes all the way out over the river. And that's where we'll detect our bites. I went with the long rod because as you can see, this bank is pretty flooded. And so it's nice having the longer reach of the rod out and over. So there's the grass and my line sitting somewhere like that. You do want to be fairly close to the grass because I think these fish run tight to the bank up the river. But here's my rod tip. Here's my setup. This rod, but it is fun. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's a red horse. It's not a white duck, it's a big red horse. Nice. Let's see if I can crawl him here in the mud. There we go. That's 
a red horse. I'm not really sure what variety it is because there's tons and some of them are hard to decipher, but that's a big red horse. See that mustad hook just got him pinned right in the nose there. That is fun on that 10 foot rod, catching suckers in the spring, big red horse. It's so fun to, you know, ice fish all winter long and finally catch a fish on a long rod, not to mention a 10 foot rod. Catching a fish on the long run again after a long winter. So what's the big deal with chasing suckers, uh, chasing rough fish? Well, here in Minnesota, certain fish species seasons close. So like, what's the day today? Oh yeah, it's Cinco de Mayo, it's the 5th of May. And so our fishing opener here in the state of Minnesota opens May 12th, and that's for northern pike, walleye, and bass, species of both kinds. So. There's really nothing to target sometimes, you know, like we're caught in an in-between time where some of the lakes have ice on them still and you can't really fish the ice safely because of the conditions. So this is like the most accessible fish. Plus, like I said earlier, it's just really nice to catch a fish on a long rod, be out and enjoy the sunshine after six months of dank coldness. So to me, suckers are a lot of fun to chase. the light is bright. You can even detect it. I had a hunch, lifted my rod up. Sure enough, he was sitting down there munching, standing still. fishing a little farther out in the river and I went back to fishing tight to the bank. I literally got bit within the first minute. So, come on, oh, there we go. Yeah, another red horse. Like I said, there's a ton of varieties. Um, the biggest ones being the greater red horse and the river red horse, the goldens and the silvers, and then the short heads I think are the smaller ones. So, cool looking fish, a lot of fun. This is like a natural dam. It's a huge set of falls behind me. Um, so these fish run up the river and just pile up, you know, right here and in some of the pools that are a little bit farther up. But you can see them just rising all over the place. So, I mean, this is one of the stupidest, in a good way, places that you can fish for suckers because they just are stuck here. And so you get a high density of them. So we're going to try it here. They just pile up right below these falls. Ooh, he's digging. The long rod isn't necessary here, so I got the 13 feet now. Still a lot of fun. Jeez, I can't control this thing. Oh, it's a big, big, big red horse. Really big red one. I can't even turn it. Oh, there we go. Oh no. See that 
that's why we come up here. These big red horse like that. That is a lot of fun in the current. Dang, that is crazy. And that did not take long, like literally five minutes and we've had tons of bites, so. Yeah. Oh yeah. In it for the long haul. my right hand we have uh, some variety of a red horse and in my left hand here we've got a white sucker. So much fun to come down here and see these suckers do their thing you know like I said things start out pretty slow in the spring running up the rivers and whatnot but when it goes full I mean it is as thick of any fish run you can imagine. 